classic pork belly dish is a wonderful thing. And in today's recipe, I'm taking a beautiful bit of pork belly, roasting in the oven, and serving it with some applesauce gravy and mashed potato. What can I say? Sometimes it's about doing the simple things well in the kitchen, and this is most definitely the case with this beautiful dish. Behold this wonderful belly pork. You may recognize this cut if you saw last week's video, as with my trip to the butchers, this was prepared in that video. It looks massive, I know, but meat does shrink down in the oven, as you'll see. What I really like here is the bones have been separated from the meat, so it can be roasted, and then when you want to carve, simply take those bones away. There are two big advantages of doing this. The bones act as a trivet, and they impart maximum flavor to the joint of meat. To reduce any excess moisture, I use some kitchen towel to pat my meat dry. This has just come out of the fridge, so after I take away my moisture, I put this to one side so it can come up to room temp. I'm cooking some onions underneath this belly pork. There's nothing quite like a slow-cooked caramelized onion. I love them. I'm not even going to bother peeling them. I'm going to leave the skin on. Also for a bit of background flavour, I'm going to crush up a few cloves of garlic. These will add a nice flavour to the gravy later. Grab yourself a suitable roasting tin. Ideally you want one that will fit the pork snugly. If it's an oversized tin, the cooking liquid may reduce too quickly. Place the onions and garlic in, followed by some sage leaves. Now is the time to season this fellow up. So to start with, I season the bottom with salt and pepper. Use your hands to really spread that seasoning around so it gets in every nook and cranny. Now place skin side up, add a touch of oil. I'm using groundnut oil today, and you could be using some thyme here, but I'm using fennel seeds on the skin. Lots of flaky sea salt going on too. Again, use your hands to really rub the seasoning into the joint. Then I grab some British cider and pour into the base of the tin to start off that cooking liquor. Looking great already. Let's get this into a preheated oven and this will start the crackling off. After 20, 25 minutes, I take this out of the oven, reduce to 160 degrees and place back. Depending on the size of your joint, I roast this for at least two hours. I roasted mine for three. As long as your oven is low and slow, this will render down all of the fat and tenderize the meat. A classic accompaniment here in the UK with pork is apple sauce. The fruitiness, sweetness and a little bit of tartness acts as a wonderful contrast to that succulent and delicious meat. The apple sauce is very easy to do. Grab yourself some cooking apples, or as I'm using today, some Bramley apples. Peel and quarter them, cut them all up into small pieces and place into a saucepan. Add a few tablespoons of caster sugar and a touch of water and put on a medium high heat and cook down. It can take a while, but check on it from time to time. Be patient and you shall be rewarded with a beautiful apple sauce. Why buy it when it's this easy to do? Also, I'm going to peel some spuds in preparation for making my classic mashed potato. So they can cook quickly, I'm going to cut up into smaller chunks and boil until tender. Whilst that is going on, the pork has had its time and can be removed from the oven. Check out that crackling. I would let this joint rest for 20 minutes so the meat can relax and become even more tender. I take most of the onions out of the pan as well, and now it's gravy time. I drain that liquid off, most of it's fat, and you don't really want that in your gravy. Set your pan on a medium heat, and whenever I'm at this stage, I taste what's in the pan and I see what ingredients I need to complement what's already there. As the heat was high and it's cooked for a long amount of time, the contents are quite dark and roasted, so it needs some light flavours to make this into a nice gravy. I'm going to add some more of that cider, and I'm going to add some apple sauce. Stir around, scrape everything from the bottom of the pan, and then add in your chicken stock. Reduce and then strain. For my mashed potatoes, these can simply be put through a ricer with some butter and milk and some seasoning. I don't want my mash to be too wet, so not too much milk. 
pork is so juicy and tender, it looks amazing. This is how it's looking. Wow, I just love this dish. There's so much flavour in a belly of pork and I think you need a bit of heat there to set the crackling but it's really important to cook it low and slow for a good amount of time. I'm really, really happy with my belly of pork today and it's been brilliant collaborating with my local butcher. They've supplied this meat, they've prepared this meat. Please check out my previous video and you'll see Jamie Archer, my local butcher, preparing all of these cuts, including this one, belly of pork. Let's get stuck in for the taste test. Looks amazing, doesn't it? So, so good. That's got a lot of flavour. The meat itself is really nice and tender. The crackling, there's a nice amount of air in it. It's not too dense and it just falls apart, it's just nice and flaky. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.